When the news first broke, news from a house trailer along a blacktop road 10 miles east of Golden Gate, news like you'd never want to hear if you could help it, it traveled across the southern part of Illinois and as far north as Chicago, where the AP wire service picked it up and sent it all over the country. Afterward, folks had wanted answers, and if the answers didn't become apparent and fairly quick, they'd start making up their own. Talk started long before the fire. Back in September, when Ronnie moved out and took up living in town with his girlfriend, Brandy Tate. All that autumn and up through Thanksgiving, we talked about it. At the grocer, the hardware store, the bank, the cafe. Ronnie Black had walked out on his wife Della and all their kids, left them in that ratty trailer just south of Bethlehem Corner, living there by themselves. Ronnie is just mean and tricky enough to do some damage if the punching gets to going. He has a tattoo on the back of his neck, Bad Moon. And we knew enough about his history to believe it was true. That boy was surely born under a bad moon on the rise. In the days after the fire, folks from Golden Gate drove out the blacktop to get a look. Car after car. People who'd known Della and her kids and people who hadn't. They came to lay flowers, teddy bears, and cards at what was left of the trailer. Someone tied four helium-filled balloons, red, yellow, blue, and green, to a low branch of the cedar tree at the corner of the goat shed. I could tell everyone about the blaze and the sounds, the roar of the flames, the breaking of the glass, the crackling of the vinyl and plastic, the popping of aerosol cans exploding. I could describe the cries I heard from the children and how there came a time when they stopped and how that was the worst sound of all, the absence of anything human. I could say how the volunteer firefighters found Della holding the baby with Gracie and Emily huddled up close to her. I could admit there'd been so little of them left that the deputies brought them out all in the same body bag. But it's nothing I want to talk about. Not ever. Something odd about that fire, Milt said. I can't put my finger on what it is, but something don't set right with me. It went up in a hurry, I can tell you that. And I can tell you the blaze sure burned hot in a certain place. I saw Ronnie come from behind the trailer, toting something, can't say what it was, but he put it in the back of that firebird and started at the blacktop. Not fast like he usually does, but real slow, like he didn't want anyone to take note of him. At the bank the next morning, when Laverne asked if there was any reason to suspect Ronnie could have set that trailer on fire, I could have said that was a ridiculous notion. I could have put it right out of her mind, the last chance for anyone to stop the gossip. But I told her I didn't know, and then walked away. It was the worst thing I could do, and I knew it. When the town finally settled their bets on Ronnie, and the evidence said they were right, Sheriff Biggs brought him into the station. It doesn't take a blind man to see you had both motive and opportunity. You better start talking. He leaned back in his chair. You better tell me something I'll believe. A story so real it'll save you. A story as real as that. <laughs> See bad times today. 
don't go around tonight. It's bound to 